Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkle. Hello. And the blessed day has arrived. Uh, Hollywood is getting a saving throw. Hollywood writers getting a saving throw. Apparently, the WGA and Amp Tip reached an agreement late last night, Eastern Time. Yeah, it was too late for us to go. We I... didn't care. I mean, <laughs> not enough to go to the studio to record a video at like you know eleven thirty at night. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna talk about it because we don't have the details. We don't have the details of this tentative agreement yet. And remember, members still have to vote on it. Yes, but according to like a tweet that was posted out, it was an extremely good deal according to WGA. The last deal was extremely good. Now this comes right after uh, the word was that AmpTip was giving them their best and final offer, take it or leave it. And then they had another couple days of negotiation. Yeah, so that couldn't have been the best and final offer. So I don't think it was the best, best offer. But according but to the WGA person, they probably got the writer's room. I, they probably did. I, I'm curious to see if maybe they you know put put a uh, a smaller number of required writers in the writers room because i know a lot of the showrunners were against it we'll we'll talk about this like look we've said since the beginning if you can get more money for what you're doing do it we also said this whole thing is kind of stupid with the writers room uh, yeah i still stand yeah. by that yeah i think that is i think what's gonna potentially happen this is my own personal opinion right i think what's going to happen is yeah the writers got what they wanted, but we're going to see fewer shows. That's what it's going to happen too, because I'm sorry, you put too many writers in the writers room, we're going to get more and more low quality, agenda driven bullshit. And it's going to cost a lot. Like mm -hmm. you're paying an arm and leg. And we're seeing that with, you know, Netflix. Oh, yeah, they're and going to have to lower. And then the, the actors want more money too. So we're going to have to see, which, you know, honestly might be a blessing. I think, I think so. there's too much. There is too much. I think there's a lot of it subpar shit. That that's the problem with streaming. It was always quantity over quality. And I think maybe we will go back to, you know, getting just a couple of original shows on these streaming platforms, but they'll be higher quality shows. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Maybe. That's all you need. There's so many. There's you know, for every good show, there's like a dozen crappy ones. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. Uh, probably some woohoos going on in, in Hollywood. They got a reprieve. Now, I'm just glad it's almost over so we can stop talking about it. Well, that's just the writers. So we still oh, have. That's right. We still have the actors. We still have the actors to deal with. And, and then the video game people. The video game people. And then uh, what? They made a deal, a tentative uh, agreement with uh, IATSE over the summer. So they ain't going. So, so, and remember, this is only a three year deal. So this buys the studio's time. Like, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer here, but. The studios have three years to come up with plan B. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, and I think that the bar is going to get moved because we, we see how far AI technology has come. And just the, just the last, you know, two or three years, where is it going to be in three more years? You know, they might be like, well, you know, guys, mm, it's pretty good. And we really don't need you. So see ya. I don't know. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't think you're ever going to be able to take the human element out of it. But the way technology works is you need fewer humans usually to do the jobs, mm -hmm. you know, and this is, this is true for blue collar workers and it's true for white collar oh, workers. Oh, but it's okay when it's them. It's okay if it's just those, uh, those, uh, uh, rednecks, right? It's okay if it's them. Anyway, deadline. It's a deal. WGA and AmpTip reached tentative agreement. To tentative. The, tentative. It has to be voted on yet, so. Yeah. Um, so they've reached a tentative agreement that WGA and AmpTip said in a joint statement. Details of the agreement haven't been released, but will be revealed by the Guild in advance of the membership ratification votes. Uh, the next step is going to see the negotiating committee vote on whether to recommend the agreement and send it to the board and council for approval. Wait, wait, wait. There's a tentative agreement that might, that still has to be voted on by the board and then has to be written up and then has to be or written up, then voted on by the board. Then it has to be given to the people to vote on and then they have to all agree on it and everything. So, you know. Okay. Yeah, because they said it could be days. They said basically to ratify it and to send it to all the right people to get people to sign off on it. And I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, which could potentially be some people are not happy with the deal because we don't know. Because the sticking point seemed to be that writer's room. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. People are so desperate to get back to work. I think at this point, as long as it's a quasi good deal, they'll agree to it. Uh, that's what I think, too. I mean, I think it's like, look, we can't. And I think, I think what's going to happen in, in terms of just the cost of these shows is... Darwinism is going to win out and they're not going to green light as much stuff as they did. 
you know, you're going to, you might have 10 or 12 people in the writer's room, but it's going to be on a show that they know is going to perform, you know, and the showrunner might have more say in it to make sure they don't come off the rails. Well, this, this statement is interesting to me. Um, we have reached, dear members, we have reached a tentative agreement on a new 2023 MBA, which is to say an agreement in principle on all deal points subject to drafting final contract language. Um, so there's still a long way to go. Uh, what we have won in this contract, and then they don't say, oh, most particularly, everything we have gained since May 2nd is due to willingness of membership to exercise its power, demonstrate solidarity, and blah, blah, blah. What have we won? Well, we've struck and we work together. Okay. Four. Yeah, right. What, we can exactly? say that, that that with great pride, this deal is exceptional with meaningful gains and protections for writers in every sector sector of the membership. They didn't say they got everything they wanted. They say meaningful gains. Meaningful gains, which the last deal had meaningful gains. So my what I want to know is if, if everybody goes back to work, are they going to apologize to Drew Barrymore? If I were her, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, you guys threw me under the bus. Mm -hmm. And then like a week later... You, yeah, you guys almost had a deal in place. What difference did it make? Yeah, what what difference did it make? You um, know, I'd, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, yeah, you're not coming on my show. I'm not your friend. But you they're know? basically like, we're not going to share it for now. What remains is for our staff to make sure everything that we've agreed to is, you know, codified into final contract language, right? And you have to make sure they have lawyers go over it to make sure they didn't try to sneak stuff in. Totally true. And though we are eager to share the details of what has been achieved with you, we cannot do that until the last I is dotted. To do so would complicate our ability to finish the job. Well, this is, you can tell us it's written by writers because it's very unnecessarily wordy. Um, the, the, okay. So this is interesting too. Um, I don't know. I'm just saying like, they're not going to let the majority of people know what the union is agreeing to until they've already basically agreed to it. And they've had, well, they didn't agree to it. They, they basically have to have it written out. And then they have to make sure that it's written out exactly as what they agreed to. And then they get to vote on it. So they basically won't get to know what they're voting on until they're presented to vote. Yeah. So there, <laughs> there could be some problems because people might look at this and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't what we wanted. Well, well this is how they have to do it. So to do yeah. so would complicate our ability to finish the job. So as you have been patient with us before, we ask you to patient again one last time. God, wouldn't it be funny if, if, if the members got it and they're like, hell no. I think at this point, the members, you know, they're so if desperate it's, to get if it's back at least work, what they were given like, before yeah. and then some, they're going to say yes. Because well, like, they're like, this is ridiculous. Well, there were, on too long. Yeah. There were showrunners that wanted them to take the last deal. They were flipping mm -hmm. out because they were like, that last deal was pretty damn good. Again, remember some of these people are getting over $10,000 a week. You know, well, I mean, before the deal, they're they were getting, getting like some, nine, they're getting eight to like eight to 10. Yeah. And, and, uh, understandably it's, not full-time work. It's not 52 weeks a year, but you can live pretty damn well, even in LA off a couple months. Most gigs aren't 52, you know, weeks a year in LA. Right, I mean, when it right. comes to movies and shows, it, it, you know, most jobs are probably by the show. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. Well, ask, you know, people to work in visual effects or whatever, work in animation. They're basically hired to work on that particular project. Well, a lot of times the studio it, hires know. those people. That's a little yeah. different. But like when you're doing like a, you need a writer's room for like a show and the show's like a 13 week show, you know, you, you're hired for that, that gig. And then depending on your contract, you know, you're free to go to another show within the studio or something else, you know, but, and same for the actors, you don't, you don't, you, you get one job and then when it's over, you can move on to your next project or whatever. Sometimes Sometimes people do projects at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. It, it is what it is. It's the nature of the industry. Well, they don't want that. They want no, they don't. Like but that's just the nature of the industry. You're not going to retire with a watch, you know, from, from the entertainment industry. Right. Um, so, yeah. Oh, my this, God. This goes on and on. <laughs> I was oh kidding God. about writers. Okay. Okay. To be clear, we'll get to the bottom here. Uh, to be clear, no one is to return to work until... Specifically authorized by the guild, we are still on strike until then, but we are, as of today, suspending picketing. Instead, if you're able, we encourage you to join the SAG after a picket lines this week. Finally, we appreciate your patience as you waited for news from us. Uh, we had to fend off rumors during the last few days of the negotiation. Please wait for further information from the guild. That would be, people were like, oh, this is the, the last and final offer from the studio. And uh, they're like, no, it's not. Well, we can, they were in negotiations for several days, so they must have not have been. But I, I'd laugh if it wound up to being like the same damn deal that they had before, pretty much. 
This was more writers in the writers' room. Yeah, <laughs> more writers um, in the writers' room. They said that they're gonna the leadership's totally gonna vote on Tuesday when language is settled, and then from there they'll get to everybody. So the comments are like, okay, we've got congrats to all my fellow WGA members. Of course, I'm anonymous. I don't want people to know who I am. Um, WGA is not crossing actor picket lines. Okay, I like this one. Though. Oh wait, that's a good point though. Wait, don't skip that. WGA is not crossing the actor picket lines, so nothing's gonna be happening until the actor strike is settled. Well, that's that's true. So, but. If you look at the order of, of how things are produced, they are written before they are filmed. So you can. Yeah, but things that can't, that were in filming, right? You know, the writers must be running yeah. on stuff. They can't go back to that either. No. That's so, a valid point. L.T. So, Picard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, that is true. So, yeah, I mean, it, they can write more episodes of shows for like next year, whenever they get there. I, I think because of this, I think that the actors strike will probably be taken care of here pretty soon. I, I think the writers had personally, it is my personal pain. Personally, I think the writers had bigger asks and some of them, I don't think were very practical. Again, I, the writers I think room. every ask was practical except for the writers room. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think everybody, look, you have a right to get more money. If you can get more money, if your show's performing, you should get more money. We are watching. Yeah. I think if your show's performing, that's the, that's key right there. I think if people were doing good shows, if your show's really performing, well, they most definitely should have got more money. Yeah. And I think if shows are doing well, the studios should have to disclose and be transparent about the numbers. But I think they should be transparent about the numbers for everyone, including investors and everybody else. But they aren't. Yeah, because they said that you know how they were going to do it is they basically would sneak the unions. Right. And the still numbers, not, not but, being transparent overall. Right, right. Um, and I think that they had a fair ask there. I think the AI limitations, not saying you can't use it at all, but limitations, I think is a very fair ask. And I think that the writer's room was completely ridiculous. And I'm going to stay by that completely because it, it was stupid. Yeah, I think anytime you force an employer when you're, you're dealing with, and this is you know, coming from employers, right? And you're dealing with the situation where it's like, you know, especially like white collar work. It's like you don't, you know, if there's only so much money to pay so much help and it's not like you, you're sending these guys down to the coal mines or something in a very dangerous position. It's like you're writing a sitcom or you're writing a cartoon show, whatever. And I'm not saying it's not stressful, right? Right. We make stuff. It's I'm not saying it's not stressful, but like you shouldn't have to mandate the number of people that work on it. Well, Here's like what you said. I don't think it's going to go the way they think it's going to go. They're going to be like, yeah, we get a writer's room. Yeah, we get more money. And what's going to happen is, oh, shit, there's less shows. So we all lose. We all, you know, Half of us are going to be let go anyway. That's what I think the end goal is going to be. I think, I think the studios are looking at this. It's like, okay, fine, fine. We will give them what they want. But now we're going to be a lot more picky about the shows we, we green light. Look what they did. They waited until after they could do uh, Force Majeure and after they could cancel a bunch of deals. To put this through mm -hmm. because that was the plan. The plan was they had buyer's remorse about a lot of the stuff they were green lighting. They mm -hmm. overspent right on or streaming. Wrong. I think that is what they were doing on purpose. Yeah. And I think they're like, okay, well, we'll just drag this thing out as long as we have to, to be able to cancel shows and not get canceled ourselves because they already think we're the bad guys. Right. I think what's so funny about this is people get on us for going after Disney for being an awful company in some, some regards. And then as soon as the strike happened and Disney was kind of the, the face of it, Bob yeah. Iger was the face of it. Now it's okay to hate Disney. I know. I know. Right. Yeah. Clownfish was right. Put some money in the jar. I'm just, I'm just saying, but this is funny too. They said, won't somebody please think of the multimillionaire studio execs? No, I like the one down here. I will never forget the way writers behave, the way they talk to me, and the way they treat others and the way they interact with us. As a SAG actor, I can tell you in my respect regard for the people who are writers is gone. The actions of your new young members and your out-of-work members was has unilaterally destroyed your reputation. If you have a chance to avenge all the consequences on any of you, there will be zero hesitation. If I have a chance, there will be zero hesitation. So it's supposed to be an actor. Well, again, the the writers were the holdup. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Well, I mean, I'll this tell is you, what, you don't hear anything about. You hardly ever hear anything about the the, the actor strike. It's all the writers. It's almost all the writers and the people there. And this is the thing that, that I noticed too. The people that are complaining the loudest are the ones that have done the least. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not seeing a lot of like. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not out there, but you're not seeing like a lot of really well respected writers or big time writers 
daily out there tweeting. Instead, it's like some 22 year old that maybe did a filler episode of something or helped well, showing up at the like a yeah, universal and harassing that was, theme park people was not probably the way to go. This one's interesting. The amount of, of money that corporations lost during the strike, 500, was it million dollars? Yeah, half right? a billion dollars. Yeah. Okay, right? The amount of money the writers were asked to cover the next three years, $47 million. CEO spent half a billion dollars just to agree that the writers' demands four months later. No, it's more than that, dude. The yeah. writers asked for less than 10% of the money the studio squandered in the moronic effort to try to break the workers and flush half a billion dollars out of the drain. Yeah, but there's more to it, dude. And among this, how many people got their, their, their contracts canceled? And well, they were allowed to do it. Yeah, that's what they're bringing up here. They're like, um, this person said that the po poor multimillionaire showrunners, because they're saying about the studio execs, you know, Greg Berlin, Chuck Lorre, uh, Ryan Murphy, Shonda Rhimes, Seth MacFarlane, David Benioff, et cetera. These guys are, yeah, and they, they a lot of them had their deals canceled. You right, know, so I'm saying that how many people are out of work? Because but he's of like, that. we're, we're gonna, they, it was costing far less, and it was like, no, they they probably are going to save a lot of money because now now they're going to probably cut shows, you know. So it's probably they're not going to send Ben half a billion dollars to fight you for no good reason. They had a reason. Trust me, they're you, they're being counters are some of the best in the business. They find a way to screw all of us out of well, not all of you, not me, out of money with Hollywood accounting practices. You think that these people were too dumb to understand that they were dropped, they were losing half a billion dollars to to only you know lose forty seven million dollars? No, 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 no. There's way more to it than that. They wouldn't, yeah. So this person here, this person, I I, I can almost guarantee you, this person's like twenty years old, right? They're like, you know, the union doesn't benefit me at all if I'm not union because there were a lot of below the line workers mm -hmm. that were, you know, lost their houses and, you know, uh, horrible because of this dragging out as long as it did. It benefits you even if you aren't a union. Uh, the wages are going up for the unionized employees. It usually means all wages go up because employees don't want to lose experienced em employers don't want employees. Employers, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're young because employees don't want to lose in experienced employees. There's Employer, point. Yeah, the, the employers. Yeah, okay. The, uh, clearly a writer. Mm -hmm. Clearly a writer. Unionized writer. This is the quality right mm -hmm. here, guys. There's plenty of evidence that the more unionization in area, the higher overall wages are for everybody. No, this has got to be... You've been watching too much of Adam Ruins Everything, and he's not that smart. I thought he was smarter than he is. He's not. When you go back to work, ask for a raise. They won't give it to you. Find a new job. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? Wait, wait, wait. Let what? Me Let me get this straight. Let me get this what? straight. What? The non-union people are supposed to go back to work after they give the writers a bunch of money, ask for a raise, and if they don't give them one, you go find another job. That's what they're being told by someone who's probably a writer in a in union. That you go ask for more money, and if they don't give it to you, you go find another job. When what I the hell? When I suggested on Twitter that if people were really that miserable in Hollywood, because there are people that are really going hard in the paint on the whole system, and they're like, I hate Hollywood, I hate these executives, F these people, whatever, then why are you here? Why are you doing this? Wait, it's I know it's easier said than done, but complaining about things definitely won't manifest a raise. Are you kidding me? This is the mentality of these young WGA. Are we WGA. Sure a parody comment? No, no somebody literally, else was like. literally said, you, you go ask for a raise and you should get one because we're getting a raise. If they won't give it to you, go find another job. I know it's easier said than done, but you should go find a job instead of complaining about it. Says the person, allegedly a WGA writer, who just got what they, you know, who went on just strike got for five their deal. months yeah. and got what they wanted. So, and that sums up what that other SAG person was saying, how the writers were behaving. Yes. So let me tell you some anecdotal evidence wow. as a 40-plus-year-old guy who's worked a lot of places, including some places that had unions that, no, I did not join. Uh, one company... When they voted to unionize, one company I worked for, I and mean, there was a whole process. They brought the labor board in and mm -hmm. this whole thing. Yeah, you have to go through all that, yes. Uh, when they decided to unionize, and they were already, it was a, a printing, well, it was a publisher. They, they had a printing operation, and they published newspapers, magazines, and stuff, too. And the pressmen decided they were going to unionize. And these pressmen were, I believe at the time, if I recall, they were the highest paid pressmen in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. They were paid very, because they were working on big national jobs and stuff. And they weren't, I mean, I could be wrong. I talked to some of these guys, like they weren't working them around the clock. It was mm -mm. like they had, there was a bunch of them. Anyway, they decided they wanted more money because they saw how much money was coming through the shop. They're like, well, we're, we're, we're printing like the freaking TV guide stuff and all this stuff back then. That's, that's how old this, you know, this story yeah. goes back, TV guide stuff. And they're like, we want a piece of that. So it got so bad that uh, when they unionized, the owner of the company sold 
the printing side of the company off because he didn't want to deal with the union. But then they also laid a bunch of people off uh, as soon as it got sold because they're like, we can't afford them and you. Mm -hmm. And these guys are bringing money in because they're the pressmen. We need them. We don't need all the office staff. We don't need it. So no, it doesn't actually work that way. If there are, are a finite number of resources allocated to employees, to salaries, sometimes to pay the, the more valuable or the contractually obligated employees, you have to pull the money from someplace, which means you might get your deal, but the other guys are getting fired. But they're like, keep saying about yeah. the, the, the studios and all that, but they, a lot of them have investors and things too. And the, the house never loses. The house never they loses. Can't, they can't say, hey, investors, I'm sorry. You're going to have to like not get your cut because we have to pay more to these people. They're not going to do that. I mean, I, well, right or wrong. I'm not saying that's Yeah, we're right. not saying. I'm just I'm saying. I'm not saying any of this is right. I'm just saying this is how things work, right? It doesn't necessarily mean how things work. But the, but the, 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 the sheer arrogance of being like, yeah, we're getting ours. Go ask for yours. If you don't get it, go find another job. I don't know what to tell you. Is like, oh, my God. Are you effing kidding? But this sounds about right from what I've seen. These are probably the same people who showed up at a theme park to harass guests. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're placing your frustration and anger well you know in the wrong wrong place people went to the theme park let me remind you sent out gave out flyers to guests that were trying to come into to universal studios hollywood for halloween horror nights and then they had the, the balls to say in, in the thing you know be nice to the, to the team members because they're fighting for fair wages too those people get 20 dollars an hour you people are getting eight to ten a week okay a ten thousand thousand yeah, yes a week a week you know, but that that was that's how that's how completely out of touch and up their own asses. That, that, that's why I get mad. That that kind of behavior. Craft services, they'll be fine. Maybe she'll get a fifty cent an hour raise. Yeah, like you, you know, know low line workers. They're on our yeah. side, so you know, who cares? If they lose their house when it's their turn. We'll we'll stand with them. Will you? Will you? The actors are even like you, you hung us out the dry because that. To be honest. Yeah, you don't hear. The only time I've heard anything about the actors. We don't hear about the actors. Was when they were getting in trouble because they weren't allowed to talk about, you know, different projects they worked on years ago, which I, mm. I don't think that should be. That's stupid. That's, no. And I'm sorry. Well, that's dumb. <laughs> I think that's stupid. I, 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 can, I can understand oh. not promoting current projects, but the, talking about Chuck from 20 years ago is right. not going to Or, or when they anything. basically told influencers that if you're one to be a part of the SAG after, you better, you know. Yeah, you, that pissed you, me you off. You better that. not ever you know, work with studios or take deals that we might have gotten, but you're going to get instead. That you don't. That's bullshit. Well, they're weaponizing people like this, morons, young morons who think that they're going to be something. Who are probably the ones out there when, oh, coal miners are out of work? Well, I can Go get another job, I guess. Learn to code. These are the same yeah. people that are breaking down because they had to work eight hours at Starbucks. Yeah. Now, to be yeah. fair, I've seen Starbucks workers oh my push God, to the limit. Awful. You know, <laughs> I've seen them push it. to the I limit. I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to make fun of them because yeah, I, I mean, do it. I've I've seen it, but I'm just saying, like, you know, take your own advice. I couldn't. I put it out there I'd yesterday. Hit yeah, I probably would too. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I, I'd be fired a day. I <laughs> it would not work. I put out on Twitter. Yesterday, I said that if Hollywood makes you that miserable, and I'm not trying to be a dick, and I'm in all seriousness, find something else to do. Leave. Just leave. And I got retweeted by a bunch of 19, 20-year-old wannabes with anime avatars that were like, see, this guy's so out of touch. He thinks it's really that easy. I'm like, I can almost guarantee you none of you are actually working in Hollywood. You're a bunch of wannabes. Just like all these wannabe animation industry professionals, all that is like, look, this is going to change things because it's going to be a lot more expensive to produce shows, which means that people like you probably aren't going to be the first ones picked. It's going to be the people that are seasoned, that are that are veterans, that know how to play ball and get stuff done. They're not going to be plucking uh, 20 year olds off a of tumbler anymore and handing them the keys to a multi-million dollar animated series. So it doesn't benefit you Here's, like you think it does. Right after that comment, another one. The management, since they weren't in production, should have been spending their time preparing for the way, for when the strike is over so production can, as, it can resume as fast as possible. What makes you think they aren't? If people are not getting back to work in 20 years, that's some crappy ever management problem, not the striker's fault. And when wages <laughs> go up for, for one union, the wages go up for everybody working because employers want to retain their experienced employees. Sometimes you have to push the pain to get to your life. Oh. So wait, let me get this straight. No, people who weren't on strike, who lost their jobs, you have to just push to the pain so that they got what they wanted because you might get more money. You may get more money too. 
Speaking of pushing through the pain. Can we just not? This is one pain that could totally go away and I would not care. Speaking of pushing through the pain, good news, everybody, because they don't need actors, uh, that if they get this, this deal finalized, late night TV might return. So you have to listen to them the entire time because there's no actors. Yeah, pretty much. That's okay. Uh, we've got YouTube. I was to say, I mean, who would, I mean, let's be honest here. They're not very funny. Yeah, they most said, of the time. They're, it's painful to watch for me. And then if you don't have any actors on there for them to do interviews with, why does anybody care? So I've heard, I, I haven't listened to this podcast. They have the Strike Force 5 podcast. Now, the last strike, the, the late night shows, they just went on without mm -hmm. writers. And, they, you know, they, they admitted, hey, it's not as good, but whatever. I, I still think you owe Drew Barrymore a massive apology. You know, I, I think that they owe, they need, they need to get on their knees in front of Drew Barrymore and be like, we're so sorry that, that we put you through hell. And then we put this thing to bed a week later. Right. And then, you know, I mean, Bill Maher pulled his, but they didn't go after, I mean, they went after him, but he, it wasn't like he, he knew what was going to yeah, happen. He knew what he was He's doing. been doing this a long she time. Was he knew to damn go back to work. I think, I think she contractually was told she had to get back to work. Yeah, Meanwhile, The View went on the entire time. Want to point that out? Yeah, let's not forget about those lovely progressive ladies at The View who never once thought of any of you. They just kept on doing their it's thing. It kept going on. But uh, that I, was Disney, so I'm not surprised. That was Disney, so you still <laughs> think they're the good guys. we're wrong? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Yes. Well, let's wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.